spiritual conviction is faith. Faith in ourselves, faith in our fellow uh, people on the planet. And I, I want to do a reading before I start because it made me giggle. And, and it's about um, why we come together in community. So a churchgoer wrote a letter to an editor of a newspaper and complained that it made no sense to go to church every Sunday. I've gone for 30 years now, he said, and in that time I have heard something like, I don't know, 3,000 sermons. But for the life of me, I can't remember a single one of them. So I think I'm wasting my time and the pastors are wasting their time writing these servant sermons at all. What's the point? This started a real controversy. Letters to the editor. Column, much to the delight of the editor, because we know with newspapers now, they're not getting a lot of selling, so this was great. It went on for weeks until someone wrote this rebuttal. I've been married for 30 years now. In that time, my wife has cooked, I don't know, maybe some 32,000 meals. But for the life of me, I cannot recall the entire menu of one single meal. But I do know this. They all nourished me and gave me strength. I needed to do my work. If my wife had not given me these meals, I would be physically dead today. Likewise, if I had not gone to church for nourishment, I would be spiritually dead today. So first of all, thank you all for being here because it's important. I know that we can watch sermons online. Thank you, Facebook family, because I know you're not local. I know many of you are in California and, and New Mexico and places that I may not even know, so good morning. Say good morning to our Facebook family. Good morning. Good morning, Facebook. And yet I know that some people sometimes, like I just, I just don't want to get up in the morning. Trust me, there's some Sundays I don't want to get up in the morning. And I wait until the very last second. Like, how long can I stay in bed? And yet it's important to me, and it has been important to me since the day I first walked in to a Science of Mind church or a Centers for Spiritual Living. It was important to me because this became uh, my spiritual family. This became where I got nourished and I got to start to replace all of the negativity that I had been living with and proclaiming out into the world like um, spewing poison. This changed that for me. And that's why I think it's important that we show up on Sunday. Yes, we could do this online. Yes, walking in the woods is a spiritual experience. And yet I believe nothing feeds us more deeply than being in community than sharing the experience with the people sitting in this room with you. The energetic vibration of being with each other, I think speaks, mounds to um, what that song said. Like, how have we become so divided? Because we've given up things that used to be really important and we knew they were important and then we started to fast track everything. It's easier, isn't it, to stay home and click on Facebook and watch from home. It's easier. You don't have to get up. You don't have to get dressed. You don't have to put on your makeup, ladies. You don't have to comb your hair, guys. No cologne, no nothing. I'm just in bed. I can click and I can watch. Isn't that good enough? Yes, it is good. I would far rather you do that than have no spiritual connection at all. And yet I truly believe that what we are missing or what I would miss is the soul-to-soul -soul physical connection with other human beings. I cannot get that on Facebook. I now have over a thousand friends on Facebook Thank you because I am the spiritual leader of this community. So everybody in CSL, um, you know, they, they want to be friends. They have this whole CSL. We're all going to be friends. I don't, I don't know a thousand people, right? I don't know a thousand people. Friend request is the wrong term. 
get to know your request or, or something. If everybody posts in my newsfeed, I'm, I'm not going to see a thousand posts in a day. So you miss, for me, that heart-to-heart -heart connection. You miss looking in somebody's eyes and saying, how's it going? And having them look back and saying, not so good right now. Not so good. You know, I am in a depression. And just by listening, you can lift up somebody's day. Last week, I had somebody t say to me, I have to put my dog down on Thursday. And he was crushed. And so I just sat with him and let him talk about his dog and told him how pets to us are like family. And so spiritual con conviction to me is that faith. How do we practice that faith in um, especially when our life has derailed a little bit? I find faith much easier today when I am happily married, I have a beautiful home, I have a great job that I absolutely love. My life is fabulous. You know? And so for me, pretty easy to practice faith. Life is good. I'm not questioning anything. However, I was not that person when I walked through my doors, these doors for the very first time. And it took a lot of faith or a lot of spiritual conviction to get up and keep going back. Because first of all, I was clean and sober for the first time in my life and I didn't go anywhere, anywhere except to work without imbibing just a little bit. Take the edge off. Can you imagine getting up on a Sunday morning and walking in to here and I couldn't drink and I didn't know anybody? I'd come early so I could help the minister. And boy, the minute the service was over, I was out the door in my car driving down the street bawling. Nobody likes me. Nobody likes me because nobody got a chance to know me. I was so, I was scared of my own shadow. How many have been there? I'm not going to ask how many are still there because then you'd really freak. You'd be like, oh, no, don't point me out. We all go there. That's when faith is the most important. When something in our life has turned upside down. When we're on that path and all of a sudden all the wheels come off the car. And we're like, okay, this, this was not what I had planned. This was not in my um, rule book, my life book that I had written. I have shared this before. I love it. The first time I went to Karen's Wednesday night f service, and she said to everybody, you want to see God kind of laugh? Tell it your plans. Tell it your plans. And what she meant by that, I'm not going to share her whole story, just a little bit, because she has shared it, so I'm not breaking confidence. Karen had a plan for her life. An absolute plan for her life. And then the plan shifted when her husband got cancer and passed away. Drastically shifted. Turned her world upside down. And yet I don't know anybody that walks in more faith than Karen. We can all walk in as much faith as Karen. Nobody walks in more faith than Karen. That's faith. That's the conviction to know I may not agree with this, dang it. And I may be angry that I pulled this card. I may not understand why I'm going through this. And yet, I'm going to have faith that there is a brilliance that is bigger and wiser than me that absolutely knows without a doubt what this has to do with my path on this planet. That's faith. That's faith. Now, I would, could I stand up here and tell you, oh, Karen's a practitioner, and it was just easy for her. Just easy. No, it has not been easy for her. And I imagine there have been days or nights that she's awakened and wondered. Faith? I don't think so. 
Maybe not, because I haven't asked her that deep question. I know for me, if that, ha- if that happens to me, my faith might be challenged a little bit. And that's when you pull the card. That's when, as Michael Beckwith told somebody in his community that hadn't been showing up at church, and he watched her walk in, and he walked up to her, and he said, where you been? She said, oh, my life has been terrible, and I just didn't want to walk in to all this happiness and all this music. And he said, oh, that's when you need the happiness and the music the most. You can't get there. You sit amongst us, and you'll feel that energy. You'll feel that vibration. Is it going to shift what happened? Is it going to make you happy all of a sudden? No. But it's going to lift you up just enough to know that you're loved and cared for. That's the importance of community. Not me up here talking. Not necessarily the band not moving furniture around or, or, you know, getting rid of things has nothing to do with the fact that why we're here is because we need the physical one-on-one, two-on-one, one-on-thirty, whatever it is, we need that physical human connection. And some of us don't always get that, even though everybody might think that they do. Do you know that Monday, Tuesday, and Friday... When I pick up my husband, he'll say, how was your day? And most days I'll say, it was good. What happened? I'm, I worked. I'm here by myself. Most days I am here by myself from 6.30 in the morning until 4 o'clock at night. And so for me, S- Sunday's where I get my juice. Sunday's where I really connect with people other than my husband, who I adore, and you all know that. Um, And I get a lot of juice and connection from him. And there is that bigger realm of other people's ideas, other people's thoughts, other people's um, compliments or other people's suggestions of maybe you want to shift this just a little bit or do that. That's what faith is. It is a walk that we don't have to do alone. You know, in the Bible it says where two or more are gathered. There too shall I be. That was written over 2,000, well, probably longer than that. Because it was written in the portion of the Bible, I believe, Cynthia nod your head, yes. The, it was at the, the Old Testament. Yes. No, New Testament. Okay, 2,000 years ago then. I always go back to my scholar to double check before I misquote anybody. And so faith, how do we build our faith? What are some of the things we can do? And where I always go back to is spiritual practice. Spiritual practice, what does that mean? And how much time is she going to tell me now in my very busy schedule that now I'm going to have to carve out to do something to build me up? Well, first of all, realize what I just said and why wouldn't you do it? But give yourself five minutes. Everybody's got five minutes, right? All of you have five minutes. You can meditate. You could be quiet and just sit and listen to that still voice within. And while you're meditating, listening to that still small voice from within, you could visualize, what do I want my day to look like today? Because if you don't visualize what you want your day to look like, your day is going to let you know what it's going to be like. Right? So then what happens? You're reacting to everything that the universe is bringing upon you. Instead of just taking five minutes and setting a tone. How many of you have woke up in the morning? Some days you wake up, you're happy. Right? How many of you woke up in the morning and you're just not happy? You're just like, you know, the alarm didn't go off, now you're late. You turn on the water in the shower, it's cold. You don't know why it's cold. Did you pay the bill? Didn't you pay the bill? There's cold water in the shower. You climb in your car and a rat has eaten the hose to your car. Right? All of those things 
are little triggers to either let you make a choice and set you off or let you make a choice and go, all right, I am not going to let this determine the rest of my day because it will. It will. I remember one time when I was in corporate America before I found this philosophy and I was making coffee and I don't know what I did. Uh, obviously, I was in a hurry. <laughs> and I um, did something to the coffee pot and not only did it totally spill over with all the grounds on the countertop, on me dressed in a white wool suit, on the floor, and I just stood there and thought, I'm not going to tell you what I thought, but <laughs> it wasn't happy. It was not a happy thought. I did do one thing. The general manager walked in and I looked right at him and I said, obviously, this is not my day. I will clean this up and then I'm going home. And he let me. I think it might have been the look in my eye. <laughs> but we do, we set the tone. Today that can happen, and I'm not saying my first reaction is, are you kidding me? But then moving through it to, I'm not going to let this incident plan the rest of my day for me. That is having faith in yourself and in a higher uh, being. Something bigger than you. In the 12-step programs, they say a God of your understanding. You can call it whatever you want to. You can call it God. You can call it Buddha. You can call it Jesus. You don't have to call it at all. There are some religions that has no name. And to know that it is bigger than all of us and we're sitting in it right now with each other. And if we were really understood quantum physics, we'd realize even though we look separate, we're not. N none of us. It, this is one big energy field and we're all connected. That can give you a sense of peace and calm. Because the first thing it does is say, oh, I'm not alone. I might be here all day by myself. I'm not alone. And the truth is, we're never alone. And to have faith in that will help you through any situation that comes upon you. And that is the difference from having something happen in your life unexpectedly and moving through it and knowing that on the other side of it, even though your life wasn't how you had written out and planned it, it was obviously the plan. And to ride that and know on the other side of that, you're going to be stronger and wiser and for whatever reason, probably more grounded and more connected than you would have been if the plan you'd written out yourself had just been the plan. Because there's the ego plan and then there's the plan of the heart, the plan of the divine. And so that, to me, is how we practice faith, is letting go. The biggest thing we can do, and it always surprises me when I get really attached to something and I'm hanging on with all ten fingers or all eight fingers and two thumbs. I'm holding on tight and I don't understand why my life isn't working out the way I want, want it to work out because I'm just, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what I'm supposed to do. And then I let go. And when you let go, that's where the magic happens. And that's when you realized you really had no idea at the magnitude or the grace or the wonder that could be your life by letting go. Surrender. It is something that none of us, I think, I'll speak for myself, it is something that I don't necessarily want to do. It's not something that I, have, I necessarily enjoy doing. What do you mean I have to surrender? That doesn't sound like fun. I surrender. 
And so my mantra became that leap and the net will appear. And then I had a friend said, yeah, that works. Leap and I'll build my wings on the way down. Faith is knowing that if you're still here, the universe has a bigger plan for you than you have for yourself. And we're all still here. And so to really step out and be bold. What is it? Remember in David's reading, he talked about um, a duck can't be a swan. I am never going to sing like Darrell Holden. And yet I have my purpose. And I have my voice. And nobody has that purpose or that voice. Every single one of you here has that within you. Every single one of it. We were born with it. And then we built the walls around it. And we thought we became smarter than that which designed us and put us here in the first place. So I invite you this week, surrender. See what it feels like to truly let go. And so I want to close with a reading by Ernest Holmes. And you can close your eyes. This will be our prayer. If you choose, you can close your eyes. It takes less energy to live constructively than it does to live destructively. It takes no energy to have faith, while fear devastates such energy beyond our belief. It takes no energy to love. It is hate that is destructive. It does not take mental or physical energy to be happy. But unhappiness consumes so much energy that it devitalizes us mentally and physically. It does not take mental or physical energy to build up hope. It is despair that blocks us. All it takes is faith. Faith sees invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Thank you, God, for our physical and our spiritual nourishment. Thank you, God, for all of you who show up and be present and share in this wondrous expression of life. Namaste.